Dr. Bob Alexander. Well, ladies and gentlemen, time now to welcome our next set of warriors to the ring. Let's welcome from the blue corner, Manuel Angulo. Manuel Angulo is in the ring. Bob Alexander will tell you who's fighting. On his way to the ring at this time now, ladies and gentlemen, from the red corner, Elon Kadim. These are 122 pound junior featherweight Elon Kadim of Israel makes his way in. Odd record, huh? One and oh, three draws, no KOs. This one has four rounds written all over it, Sean. <laughs> Two fighters, a lot of action. They've only got four rounds. Four rounds are so hard to fight in because you don't have a, a lot of time. It really is. Like, almost like an amateur fight. But these are the pros, early stages of their careers. Let's go back to Bob Alexander. Well, ladies and gentlemen, from Madison Square Garden, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for four rounds of boxing in the Super Bantamweight Division. Your judges scoring this bout at ringside are Tommy Kazmarek, Larry Hazard Jr., and John McKay. Your referee in charge of the action is Arthur Mercanti. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks. He weighed in at 120 pounds. His professional record, one win, one loss with one KO. Originally from Ecuador, now fighting out of Miami, Florida. Let's welcome Manuel Angulo. His opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks. He weighed in at 120 and a half pounds. His professional record, one win, no losses with three draws. He comes from Renana, Israel. Let's welcome Elon Kadi. Four rounds of boxing in the Super Bantamweight Division. Good evening, gentlemen. You received your rules early in the night by the New York State Athletic Commission. Let's have a nice, clean fight. Touch gloves. Good luck to the both of you. Okay, so youth will be served here tonight. It's Anguilo and Kadim. Kadim just 22 years old. Out of Israel, as Bob mentioned. Height advantage, slight reach advantage. And in terms of experience, there's no advantage. These guys 
are green as professionals. So we'll see what, what we've got and what upside potential each has. And we can tell you, Anglio, as the left-hander, that's always a problem, isn't it, Sean? Oh, it is. These for, fighters not come for at him, you. for the no. other guy. Fighters come at you backward when they're left-handed like that. Also, you always step on your opponent's toes, or he steps on your toes. And here comes action. Angulo pressing forward, and it's Kadeem trying to dial in and, and, and time him, time his own punches, it looks like, read the moves. Kadeem will be well served with the right hand. There it is, right throw. Wow. Man, stepped on his foot. Stepped on his foot and, and, and cracked him. You know, the front feet of these, one's left hand and one's right hand, the front feet get tied up all the time. As you said, yes. And here comes Angulo. He's the southpaw pressing forward now. He's been down and he's behind in this four round fight. Oh, nice follow up left hand from Angulo, but very wild with that right hook. And those left handers are susceptible to a real straight right hand and a real wide left hook. And look at Kadeem just taking right his thing. time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, look at these feints from Kadeem. He moves his shoulder, he feints, he moves his head, he, he feints. And Gulo, a lot of pressure from him. Look at this, on attack. South cross stance. But it's uh, Kadeem who keeps turning him, huh? Oh yeah, and he walks around to the right, the right way. Look, if you're turning away to your from left, power, away from huh? the power. You move to your left. Smart fighter. Elon Kadim. Angulo very busy, but not punching enough. He's moving a lot. Here we go as he stepped, took that little half step back and then launched the combination. So good moves from the Ecuadorian. But he has been down in this fight. As Elon Kadim on the right, the orthodox stance. It is easier for a right-hander to move to his right. It's natural move to move to your left like he's doing. That's a good move against a left-handed fighter. And Gulo with a nice counter off the ropes. And now he comes after Kadeem. Little head fakes from Kadeem. Not many body shots in this fight. No. Only four rounds. They don't have a lot of time. <laughs> How do you set up a body attack? <laughs> Well, oh, Angulo walked into that little baby left hand. Kadeem, you can see the inexperience. He's short on a lot of punches, but of course, fighting a southpaw is never, never easy. Good right hand, good right hook from Angulo. You know, oh, and a nice left from Kadeem. But you know, Sean, this is not some lopsided round by any means, but. If, because of the knockdown, it looks like it's turning into a 10-8 for Kadeem. Oh, yeah. Downstairs, the body is a lot closer. We have to fight. Forget that. We're doing good. We're doing good. We don't know we will fight in San Francisco. Well, here is the knockdown. Take a look for yourself. Look at right cross right over the top on the point of the chin, direct root. Watch the feet. One more Watch time. The feet. feet get nope. tangled up a little bit, but he did not step on his foot. It was a clean knockdown. Good call. Arthur McKinney did a good job. Flash knocked out, but a really okay. quick punch. I, I missed the first time. It looked like it could have been yeah. feet tangled, so the so replay did, reveals a lot more. So did Angulo. He missed it. <laughs> Angulo's on the left. On the right, on the left now, is uh, Elon Kadeem, who's got a hefty lead in this fight. Courtesy of that knockout, knockdown. So Angula, they want him to slip a little bit, slip those punches, create more movement, not walk into anything like that. That was critical. He's behind in this four-round fight. Oh, good left hand, Mangula. You know, look at this movement from Kadim too. He moves around to his left. He moved just enough to get out of the range of punching power from Angulo, and also he stays in punching power, the punching range of himself. You know, if you move all the way across the ring, you can't hit your opponent. Yeah, he can't hit you, but you can't hit him. What, what about Angulo? What about Angulo, who to me is cutting the ring off continually, and he wants, his, wants the force uh, 
He's really into a shootout. He is, but he's not cutting him off to the right side. And Gulo isn't. And every time, that's that's the way he's moving. Uh -huh. He's controlling the movement. You got to control your opponent. That's good swing, swinging punches, Angulo. You know, you have to steer your opponent into your power. That's why a right hook would be real important right now for Angulo. Steer him with that right hook. Make force him to come into your power shot. Your power shot's the left hand. Use that right hook to steer him, push him, direct him over to your punch, to your power. So, so you cut him off to the, to, uh, to your to Deem's right. left side. You cut yes. him off and force him to yes, the other. That's right. And you crack him. You crack him with that left. If he's moving to his, to your right, you can't crack him with that punch. He'll right. run into it. So the right but, he's, hook. but he's never moving to the right. And he's not forced to move to the right. So it would be Angulo's job to force him to move that yes. way into the power. That is correct. Force it's, it's putting your opponent in, your, in the position you want him in, so you can nail him in your best shot. Pretty good round for Angulo. Yeah, it is. Softball seems to be controlling flow here, controlling pace, range. He's scoring, and and now uh, just backing up, uh, Kadeem. Kadeem may have gotten hurt earlier in this round. I noticed he slowed down a bit. And look, he's coming forward, but doesn't know what to do when he does get there. He's just more effective either countering or moving and sticking. And Angulo, look at this very movement. tough. Yeah, and, and look at the movement from Angulo, too. The constant movement. When that head's in there, keep it moving. Moving target is hard to hit. And it looks like Kadeem has, has stopped momentarily. I mean, he's not punching with, the, short with, with, the, with the force that he was in that first round. It's amazing how close this fight is, but that 10-8 uh, that round is absolutely crucial. As we close out the second. <laughs> A little treatment over there in the corner for Kadeem. Nice counter punch coming up from him. It was a a lot of muscling in there from. Medina is uh, trying to pay attention to what he's doing, getting listening to instructions. And Gulo was told to start cracking with the uppercut, and as you mentioned, start firing that right hand. They just want him to let his hands go more. He's trying to run down Kadeem, but. Once again, when he gets inside, sometimes he stops punching. Kadeem's on the right. He's dropped Angulo in the first round. So this that is only it, four. So if you gave the second round to Angulo, he'd make still it a one-point fight. Yeah, yeah still, still behind, behind one point. But that's why it's so important for this round for Elon to take control back like he had in that first. Look at these coming. Look at these both of these fighters punching. Standing flat-footed. This is a great test for both. Uh, they're so evenly matched, it looks like, Sean. You know, so young in their careers. Both oh, guys yeah. look like they could fight. Obviously, they're not finished products. And, but pretty solid technique from both guys. And they're both learning. You know, both of them are learning what they need to do. Not only listening to their corners and trying to, to carry out those maneuvers. Well, they're, they're listening learning to you, each other. They? They're listening to you. I need to speak up a little bit. <laughs> I need to practice my... Espanol. Oh, good left go. hook from Kadeem, and now he backs off, and Angulo getting wild. Boy, Angulo, not a lot of steam on his shots. He's been the aggressive guy, but he's not the harder puncher by any means. Good. Look at these punches. My gosh, they're throwing a, throwing a bombardment of punches in this fight. Punches and bunches. Well, at 122 pounds, that definitely is the case. And low blow here. Low blow. And a warning from Arthur Mercanti.
Boy, look at uh, Kadeem pounce out of the corner. It's like he wanted to jump all over. A slightly distraught Manuel Angulo. Angulo backing off a little bit here, trying to counter. Good exchange inside. Angulo has Kadeem again in the corner. Stop pushing down on the head. Stop pushing down on the head, said Mercanti. Good combination downstairs from the body. Here's Kadeem, and then he comes up to the head. You know what you try to do with that maneuver is drag your opponent's hands down to protect his body, leaving his chin open. Look at the punches in this fight. Well, both guys landing here, but it looks like Kadeem definitely landing more. Yeah, they, they, the punches seem to have subsided, but I'm going to tell you right now, Nick, I've never been hit with an easy punch. <laughs> they all hurt for years. Boy, how do you score this round? Kadeem. Bernard, fan favorite, they love him. They love them. He never met a microphone he didn't like, right? He's quite egregious. Uh, I don't know if said hi to him. I've known him for a long time. And fans came up. He was signing autographs, as, as he should. Enjoying his celebrity. Looking forward to his match with Winky Wright coming up. Uh, the, you know, when you're in your 40s, uh, it's, it's late. What's it like? What's it like to be in your 40s? Uh, you tell me. <laughs> Whenever I get there, I will. Final round here, junior featherweights, 122 pounds. Ilan Kadim in the all black trunks. And then the, I guess you'd call it pattern sequence slightly is Miguel uh, Manuel Angulo from Ecuador. He's the southpaw, and he needs to win this round and probably needs to drop Kadeem because he's been down in the fight, and that created that 10-8 first opening round for Kadeem, and that's really been the difference, the clear difference in the fight. Chief Angulo's in front of Kadeem and stopped punching. Then when he unloads that overhand left, he's got a shot there again as he tries to rip through the gloves. Well, Angulo does not know how to take a backward step. He has been moving forward throughout this fight. And you know a minor criticism I have, and it's still learning, as you said, of Kadeem. He doesn't throw enough jabs for me. He doesn't land enough. Sure, he doesn't set up his punches with a jab. But I like what he does. He, the way he moves in the ring, he don't bounce in the ring. He steps, steps around the way he, he moves his, his, his cross, his hooks. He's busy. There's a lot of things I like about him as a fighter. And Angulo, too. Uh, I agree. He, he's a guy that's tough. He comes in. He throws a lot of punches. He'll match punch to punch with anybody. There, a little left hand from Angulo is on the tail end. Uh, he kept punching and connected last. And they're connected again. And Kadeem on the ropes. Not a smart place as he slips under punches, but unable to counter effectively, missing there and getting countered himself by Angulo. Kadeem getting a bit on where those gloves coming down, gloves getting heavy. Eight ounce, they feel like eight pounds. Oh, good hook from Angulo. One minute to go in this fight. Elon Kadeem on the right and is charging forward the southpaw from Ecuador, Manuel Angulo. Angulo again has been down in the first round and very close to call since then. And that may be the difference in this fight. Oh, no doubt. When you put your opponent on the ground, on the seat of his pants, it does make a profound statement. And that extra point doesn't hurt either. <laughs> well, when you're sitting on the canvas looking up at somebody, they look bigger, they look larger than life. Been down there a few times. Not many, <laughs> Nick, but a few times. No, I can't ever remember I've seen you on the canvas. <laughs> So in a lot of great fights, and here we close out the fourth and final round. Let's Pretty watch them finish. Oh 
Four rounds down. It sure says a lot about a fighter. This kind of pace, four rounds, sometimes harder than a longer fight because of that blistering action. And it says a lot about a fighter, too. When they're tough, they get knocked down. The very first round, they get knocked down to get up only to go, go the distance. So a lot of heart from Manuel Angulo. And some skill as well. The southpaw looked good in spurts, as did his opponent, Elon Kadim from Israel. Had the knockdown. He's unbeaten in four fights, three of them draws. All distance, and they've all been short, of course, at early stage of his career. And you got to be happy with his performance, Sean. You score a knockdown in the first round, and you, know, you arguably uh, were in every round if you didn't sweep the cards. It uh, certainly uh, distinguished himself enough, it would seem, to win this. Sure, and he's still a young fighter. He's still learning. He learned some things. There's Hector Rocha right there in the, in the corner with him. He learned some things in this fight, and he's still working in the gym with Hector to try to pick up more experience and learn more things. They'll watch the tapes, and uh, they'll go back to school and try to learn more things about the sport of boxing if he gets the win. And Gulo hoping to get the victory here. Oh, it's a beautiful night here as uh, spring peaked out uh, a little bit earlier. That's the George Washington Bridge connecting the island of Manhattan to New Jersey. Uh, Saturday night, uh, people flowing in and out of the city and good crowd on hand here. The fights at Madison Square Garden, New York City, storied names in every department, but for fight fans, a great place to be. Oh yeah, and a great place to fight. They love their sports in New York. And they still remember too. They remember if you're if you're an athlete in New York, they remember they you know, people on the streets still talk to me about boxing. Look at you. I I can't walk one block without uh, being stopped. Well people talk to you. <laughs> let's let's get the decision from Bob Alexander now. Ladies and gentlemen, from Madison Square Garden, after four rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Judge Tommy Kazmarek scores the bout 38-37. He has it for Kadeem. Judge Larry Hazard scores the bout 38-37 for Angulo. Judge John McKay scores the bout 38-37 for the winner by split decision. Elon Kadeem. All three judges had it 38-37. Two of them out of the three had it for Kadeem. Elon Kadeem gets the victory. Moves to 2-0-3 in his pro career. And he's on his way back to the gym, more work, and hopefully a fight down the road. And the hits just keep on coming here in New York. Shimon Alvarez unbeaten.